Hello everyone, we're back today for another discussion in Michael's series on a biblical view of conspiracies or rather on conspiracies. We have session 25, the Kennedy ritual. Michael, I grew up in a church that was a ritualistic church. It's called the Lutheran Church mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very familiar with the rituals and uh, yeah, I don't like them very much, but welcome everyone. Michael, welcome. Yeah, hello, Brett. I was uh, raised a Roman Catholic, as uh, the most of the German inhabitants were, I think, at least in the western part of Germany. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that is not uh, an excuse for studying the things. And uh, from a young age, I was convinced that it was not the right thing to do to go into the church because the people were behaving very strange and the church being so rich but can't do anything about the hunger in the world. I said, oh, that is a big contradiction, which led me into quitting the church at the age of 25 or so. Yeah, officially in Germany, but uh, I was never a big part partaking in the church rituals. I really hated that thing. I said, no, I'm, I'm praying in private, but I don't have to go inside church. Yeah, but apart from that, where did I come to? I, came to the conclusion that uh, to study other things then, I studied the occult, I studied uh, other things. And then I was uh, watching 9-11 happening on the television several times. And I was uh, then uh, having a telephone discussion with my astrology teacher. And I said, what do you think will be the outcome? And he said, I will do a, a, a series about that. 9-11 was, was also a ritual, but we have uh, talked about that uh, last time. 9-11 is a ritual, the moon hoax is a ritual, sure. Kennedy yes. was a ritual, yeah. and of course, uh, okay, I will show you another website at the moment. This is also a ritual. <laughs> Uh, but we cannot go into this because then otherwise we would do se need several sessions and I'm not sure that if that is the right uh, thing to do, we, we are in the Kennedy thing and not into um, the actual situation out there. So it is more easy to speak about the politicians relation to the church at the moment. So this is a Kennedy ritual session 25 and I, if I would have to make an estimation how many sessions we will need, I would say that we are about in the middle. <laughs> so I think that would come up to maybe 50 sessions for the Kennedy thing. Yeah, yeah I have already written so many scripts about that. So yeah, let's go in it. I'm sorry, but we have to make a start at the ritual. And the start of the ritual is to see that there is a connection between secret services organizations and politics. And now when it comes down to religious beliefs. So this is more or less the only image you will see today of the Kennedy assassination. Because I would like to have uh, some kind of introduction. And this is just the first part of the Kennedy ritual. This is just the introduction. You see here your American president's moments before he will be killed without uh, any protections except these two motorbike police cops. OK. When we did the session about Dallas, by the way, I forgot to mention something. The m main character, J.R. Ewing, speaking of John Ross Ewing, had the same initials as Jack Ruby, the one who was allegedly killing Lee Harvey Oswald. But that's just a minor thing. Oh, now it's not, now it's storing. Okay. I don't want to go into every nitty gritty about the Kennedy ritual because we have to make the introduction now. There are people out there who are making so many claims about, yeah, that has been so, and this is mathematically in this function, etc., etc., etc. I don't go that route um, for the reason that I want to make Kennedy as an example how to study things. And therefore, I make, came up with an un, the quite the contrary idea. The contrary idea is called KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. So really, 
to have an operation manual, how to look behind the things by using symbolism, by using numerology, by using all the things together and not going into very complicated things because uh, the opponent is uh, making things very complicated. You see that at the current thing about that is a medical issue that uh, nobody know, almost nobody really comprehends. And so therefore you have to make it very simple. Yeah, please keep it simple. And I'm the stupid, yeah, because I don't know anything. So therefore, I must study the things. I must read books. I must listen to people. I'm listening to radio broadcasts. I'm looking to documents. Therefore, it is the best approach to keep it simple. So the simple, simple things actually are that it happened in Dallas on the 27th of November in 1963. I think that is a common thing. Everything else will be for the upcoming session. People are making fun of it. A German magazine called Online Focus is saying, oh yeah, there are people firing on Kennedy, Freemasons and aliens. You see that uh, it will be said the Freemasons are here in the context of the headline of that magazine so that they are being ridiculed. Yeah, but it was a Freemason initial or a Freemason ritual for several reasons, but I'm not going into this. I'm going into that. Uh, once again, we know that there is a Didi Plaza, there's an obelisk. This is the common thing, which has also been uh, displayed in Paris, in Rome, in Washington, and this also called the Trans-America Pyramid. Yeah, this is a statement or this is a sign here this uh, is located in san francisco and i was doing this here hiding this with the white color on the white background so i will now do it visually so san francisco is spanish for saint francis so the entire city has been introduced and the city San Francisco is consecrated to the saint, so the holy man of Francis. Who can that be? It is not the Pope because the town is much more older than Pope Francis, of course, and it's not his actual name. Yeah, so the entire city has been uh, for friends of Assisi or for whom else, but uh, for a Roman Catholic saint, of course. Mm -hmm. There are no saints who are dead. And it's very interesting because only in the German portion of the Wikipedia, I found this article and I was so nice to translate it this morning or to let it translate it by Diepel into English. At 260 meters tall, or I don't know how many feet that is, it was San Francisco's tallest building until 2018. We know that is then a skyscraper. Yeah, like a Tower of Babel. When the Salesforce Tower was completed, construction of the building began in 1969 and was completed in 1972. The skyscraper long served at the headquarters of Transamerica Corporation, which commissioned its construction. The architect of the building is William Pereira. Yeah, and you, you think, well, that, does that, that does nothing to do with Kennedy assassination. No, well, wait, wait, wait. Except for the lobby on the first floor, the building is not open to the public. <laughs> hmm. That should keep you into keep you. Yeah. That should uh, keep you thinking about the purpose of that tower, of that skyscraper. If it is not officially been possible to get access to the higher levels, huh? What is that on the top here other than uh, a pyramid? It's called the Transamerica Pyramid, by the way. And it is not accessible, not open to the public. Interesting, huh? You create an entire building which was then the highest in the city and then it is not accessible to the public. Mm. What do they have to hide? Yeah, well, maybe this has something to do with that it's been nowadays been used, been occupied by the Church of Scientology. That very building, of course. The Church of Scientology is the combination, of course, of science and technology distracting you into believing that uh, you have supernatural abilities and all the things. And uh, if you would like to know more of that, please contact Tom. Uh, Cruz and not me. 
Yeah, so that is absolutely BS. You Scientology was being founded, of course, by Ron Hubbard. That's the buddy of Mr. Jack Parsons, of course. Jack Parsons, a follower of Alistair Crowley. Do I need to say more? Hmm? JPL Laboratories, um, more or less a company of the National Aeronautic and Space Administration. So it's all B. Yes. Yeah, but apart from that, you see that it just uh, it serves it serves now a religious purpose because now it's been occupied by Scientology. Yeah. So of course it is a religious uh, temple, and all the things it is about here the Kennedy ritual. All the things are rituals. We talked about that last time with 9/11, etc., 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 etc. Not going into the COVID ritual, but yeah. I was reading that article here about that ritual. It's about the ritual here. Uh, a little bit more down the line. I'm not reading the entire article, of course. A little bit more down the line, I found something very interesting, which I have copied there. It is in German, but nevertheless, nevertheless, I came into the conclusion, oh, that is very interesting. Um, of course, there is many deceptions here because the author is an agnostic, Uh, somebody who does not believe in God and uh, somebody who is just having his own conclusions. They are mostly correct, but of course, uh, if you exclude God, then it is uh, it is not, not God correct, but it just resembles the opinion of somebody else. But he's talking about the Golden Gate of Fios, the serpent holder, Sagittarius in November. Yeah, that's absolutely correct, but nobody actually knows what he's talking about. huh? What is a Golden Gate? Now, a golden gate is in the same city as it was about the skyscraper now being occupied by the Church of Scientology named of San Francisco, the Saint Francis. So that means that the golden gate is also some connected um, to an occult belief because it's something to do with the zodiac, with something to do with astrology. On the one hand, you got the silver gate. That's, of course, is a mystery. Uh, Taurus in May and the Golden Gate is the Ophios of Fio, of course I cannot uh, pronounce it correctly, the Serpent Holder Sagittarius in November. Okay, I found that big article here, the portals of heaven, the golden and the silver gates. I have never come across that uh, significance and I have never read that article because I did not have the time to do so, so I cannot go into this at the moment. But of course, it resembles uh, something which is in the mysteries, meaning that it is against the Bible. It has nothing to do with truth. It is just a ritualistic uh, belief here. The guardians of the galaxy, the gates of the cosmos in the zodiac, etc. You see, this is all BS, of course. That is BS. But there must be a reason why it's been called the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, the computer is extremely lame today. <laughs> yeah, but it's always a problem when I'm using OBS because OBS is needing so much uh, memory. So this is the famous Golden Gate. In the German Wikipedia, it's been called that the gate is in the harbor of San Francisco. And it is in 1849 when it has resembled the name of the gold rush in California. Therefore, it has gotten the name of Golden Gate. Mm -hmm. You see that the gate is an entrance to another hmm, dimension or another door, another thing. It's, it's a gate. The gate is a big door. Okay, and it's a big bridge, of course. So, is it correct that it is the gold rush in California which gave the bridge its name or is it the Ophios, the serpent holder, the astronomical sign about the, I said that before, about the golden gate. Mm -hmm. Ophiochus is a constellation threading the celestial equator. Its name comes from the ancient Greek meaning serpent bearer and is commonly represented as a man grasping a snake. The serpent is represented by the constellation Serpents. Ophiochus was one of the 48 constellations listing by the second century astronaut Ptolemy and it remains one of the 88 modern constellations. An old alternative name for the constellation was Serpentarius. Oh, you, you smell the problem here? Mm -hmm. It's really a problem here because, of course, it has nothing to do with truth, everything to do with uh, religion, everything to do with 
science so called mm -hmm. I don't know Oh, this is interesting. I'm starting to read this uh, Transamerica building. Mm -hmm. I think it's rather interesting, or rather the Transamerica Pyramid on Wikipedia. I think it's rather interesting that they chose the name Transamerica, don't you, Michael? Mm -hmm. Kind of like transformation. Mm -hmm. Well, what the Transformation of the Republic, that's the title of a, a book. Um, that, uh, one of the versions of, uh, ah, this book by, um, C.T. Wilcox, um, and, uh, he was speaking about, uh, the Abraham Lincoln assassination in great detail. And, um, yeah, so, Michael, you were on a different topic here but i think it's rather interesting though that that i just quick mentioned that the building mm -hmm. was uh, okay it how it's housing but they mentioned bank of america here because the bank of america building was actually taller before this building mm -hmm. so you know bank of america was at one time bank of italy and is more than 50 percent owned by jesuits so it's a jesuit bank bank of america so interesting little factoid but anyway michael it would have surprised anybody if it could not the case that it was the jesuits not behind it yeah right right i mean you can see the symbology there in that photo of uh, Scientology with the cross at the top, you know. And whenever yeah. I see that cross, you know, it's it's like a, uh, a, a, a like a Maltese kind of design or something, and and you can tell it's just has that look, and you can, yeah, I, it's so interesting how symbology is like that, Michael. Once you've studied this enough, it just you can see it everywhere. Yeah, the, the thing is that they now have introduced a 13th sign. So between Scorpio and Sagittarius, it been, it, it's a serpent holder now. you got 13 signs. I'm absolutely not too lazy, but I don't have the time to go into this now because it is just, of course, deception now for the Zodiac. But the constellation of Figo occupies most of the sign of Sagittarius. Yeah, and so that is all deception here. Now they're coming up with, oh, and it's not uh, the, the 12 uh, zodiac signs, but 13. So they they have uh, made free space for that uh, serpent holder now to get in. And it's very interesting because in the German part, it's much more clearer than in the American part. I don't know why that is. Mythology. That now I have to go back to German and retranslate it into English because it's missing there. Wow. Oh, it is not it is it is not there. It is not there in the American. Wow. Wikipedia. So now I have to go back to the German and have to retranslate it into oh. German into English. You know what, Michael? This is reminding me of the Tower of Babel. Because, you know, God said, let us confound the language. No, so, it is just it is just the same thing around. You see that if they do it in 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 German, they could have done done or they could have taken the English article and then uh, translated into right. German or to to uh, to get the same content in other words. But no, they are missing no. this out and that out. And every time you have to <laughs> to consume so many hours into research because it's missing here, it's missing there. Well, Michael, let's make one thing sure on on this recording that we myself and along with many others are very thankful that you do these researches and bring this information to us because 
uh, quite frankly, it's not obtainable in English. That means it's we're blocked off, we're suppressed. And, you know, there's probably things that you are suppressed in Europe, in Germany, yeah. too, that are in English in the United States, maybe, and maybe in Great Britain here and there. But uh, look, everyone's divided against each other in different ways, because that's this, that's another strategy of the Jesuits to pit each other pit us all against each other, you know? So by the mercy of God, we're able to see through all this, you know, and and come to some kind of uh, terms with it. Otherwise, you know, uh, we'd be ending up uh, uh, killing one, one another all over again in another world war, you know? And that, God forbid, I mean, I hope that never happens, but... You just never know in this day and age we're living in, Michael. Just people are very desperate and and they're getting really frustrated with what they're being told because they're being lied to mm. on a global scale. I mean, it, every nation is different in that sense. There's different lies that are allowed and then there's suppression of of facts. And that's what Satan loves to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, this is an English translation here. And there are several interpretations of the mythological origin of the serpent bearer, among other things, he is equated with the hero Heracles or Hercules. On Rhodos, he was regarded as the starry Phobos. According to the most common tradition, not the truth, the serpent bearer represents Asclepius, the son of Apollo and his mistress Coronis. There you got all the rituals all together. His birth, he didn't ever exist, was ill starred. Coronis has taken another lover, whereupon the jealous Apollo killed her. Yep. <laughs> so the serpent bearer, now the new zodiac sign, yeah, represents Asclepius, the son of Apollo, the god of light. Remember Apollo 11? <laughs> you wait and see. Hmm. Hmm? This is Apollo. This is the father of Asclepius. So it's all about Greek mythology. And Asclepius was then a big healer of mankind. And you know what Asclepius is. And mm -hmm. for you can imagine for yourself why they are now introducing a 13th sign of the zodiac, which is more or less a serpent holder. What is that other than a serpent holder, Asclepius? So it all comes together. You see that even in astrology, you got now the introduction of the all healing, all wise Asclepius, who never existed. And it's from Greek mythology. There you got from Greek mythology, you got Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Omicron. And of course, I, I, I could tell you, now these numbers will show up. Rho and Sigma, Sigma is 18, means 666. So I would be very surprised if there is not a potential uh, disease out there, which is then be renamed as Sigma. My, 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 how hard can it be, huh? That website, which is incorrect, says the serpent priest of Atlantis <laughs> want to recreate the period period of genetic manipulation with global health. Yeah, okay, the last one is correct, of course, and it has something to do with the Corona Borealis in the sky because the serpent order is that sign, that star. No, it's not a star sign. What it is it now? Uh, Sternbild. This is a star constellation here. It's called Serpents Ophius. Yeah, here you got Libra, you got Hercules, and you got the Corona Borealis. So Corona Borealis also is a name of a, a star image here in the sky beneath the serpent or the serpent holder. Huh? That's Corona Borealis. Hmm? How hard can it be? Yeah, Corona also means the the, uh, the 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 hair around the head from Martin Luther. It also means the Corona. And uh, Corona, it's been said that here, that is also the next problem here, I have to retranslate it into English once again, or to at least to hope that it is, that no, there is no English Wikipedia entry on the same Corona. Yeah, it's, it's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed that you know all the things. Mm -hmm. 
it's not supposed. You shall please go back. Please shut off your screen. Go back to the American football game. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. Bread and circus, Michael. So, Saint Corona or Stefana, to have been an early Christian martyr, according to Catholics' beliefs, she is the patron saint of money butchers and treasure diggers. I said, oh, 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 money butchers and treasure diggers. She owes her patronage in monetary matters to her epithet, which means crown in German, a designation for various currencies. Yeah, and this is here the address of the one of the biggest uh, manufacturers of uh, medication at the moment in Germany. It's called BioNTech. It means an der Goldgrube, at the gold pit. Yeah, you see that is a is a Roman Catholic martyr, which never existed. And according to beliefs, she is a patron saint of money, butchers and treasure diggers. And uh, now the company which is most famous around the world of uh, producing that uh, Comirnaty uh, stuff that is been called at the golden pit. Now that's to her address. Hmm? Once again, this is the Roman Catholic patron saint of money, butchers and treasure diggers. I would be very suspicious when money is being combined with butchers butchers mm -hmm. information about the life of corona or stefana is not historically nor as certainly but merely handed down in various legends yes because she never existed she never existed yeah it's tradition it's always tradition, as you see, this is the entire uh, German Wikipedia article. I have to retranslate this from German into English because in English you are not supposed to know that. Wow. Obviously. Huh. Elite glass windows in Strasbourg. You see Strasbourg where the head of the uh, European Union is with that Tower of Babel symbol shows San Corona standing on a pedestal with a canopy above her, slightly turned to the right, wearing a yellow gown, blue mantle and white veil with palm branch and diademed crown around the blue nimbus with yellow pearl cord runs the inscription, Saint Corona. Mm -hmm. Once again, yellow, blue, yeah? yellow gown, blue mantle. Now look at this. yellow and blue and these are the colors they are using for mm, this uh, extremely serious disease here and not only this this is also the same color of ukraine isn't that something <laughs> yeah. isn't that something yeah and these are the colors of the coat of saint corona who never existed. Hmm. Yeah, you're not supposed to know that. Suppression, Michael. You're not supposed to know that. You see that? Mm -hmm. I'm not making anything up here. It's just uh, by combination of things. Once again, blue and yellow, or in a translated form, uh, yeah, but, like the uh, the colors for um, that would be Sweden mm -hmm. as well. Svensk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that was my little excursion about that. I uh, found that very interesting. There's also a Corona prayer or crown prayer. It's a magic ritual which has been used in the 17th and 18th century um, to look for uh, hidden treasuries. It is in various uh, spell books like the sixth and seventh book of Moses or Moses actually. Yeah, but it sounds the same like uh, Brett in disguise or in disguise. Sure. <laughs> in the skies. Yeah, or in, in disguise. disguise. Yeah, that's a. And you got it. You got it here in in that book. This is it's very interesting book, actually. I have to translate it, of course. Yeah. 
coming come you you have to translate it at least why does it not translate into english handbook of german superstition yeah there you found the corona prayer i'm not making anything up yeah this is a corona gebet means a corona prayer the same corona is a treasure holder above the hidden treasuries of the for the is poor people and is the ruler of evil spirits to gain riches through a series of prayers etc 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 with cabalistic words ah kabbalistischen worten yeah cabalistic <laughs> words hebrew god names huh? isn't that something yeah it's been spread in austria and, Bavar and, and uh, Bohemia, Austria and Be Bohemia, in the sixth and seventh book of Moses, not Moses, hmm? it contains the Corona prayer, allegedly. Yeah. Isn't oh, that yeah. something? Huh? Reminds me of Matthew 23 all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. The and scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Yeah, and also reminds me of Luke 4, you see, when the, the, the devil was taking Jesus upon a high mountain, showing all the treasures of the world, all, all the riches and the power and the glory of them. Ah, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy Corona. Right. Corona, for, Corona is a patron saint for riches and for butchers. And then when the company is coming up with medicine, ooh, I'm, I'm a little bit suspicious about the, if it is not for just a profit, yeah? If it's not not for profit, yeah. Back from our little excursion about the blue yellow symbolic and also about the patron saint of the Roman Catholic Church, which is very interesting and in the prayers, yeah, to get rich, <laughs> to get rich uh, by butchering people, huh? Yeah, great. You got many other topics about pyramids because this introduction into the Kennedy ritual actually I need to make or it was my intention to do so uh, to see the uh, relation between uh, Freemasonry and uh, the American politics and uh, oh, there is much more coming up here. You see the many, many, many uh, pyramids and also um, Hollywood is especially using Egyptian magic and uh, I did in German a series of uh, Hollywood, which is actually propaganda. But there is more to see. This is a pyramid of Luxor, but it, it is not at the same time because it just named Luxor. It is a black pyramid and it resembles not only a pyramid, but a sphinx, you see, and uh, several obelisks and a cigarette. A cigarette is a temple of the gods and cigarette uh, comes actually from to be high and cigarette is coming from ur, you are. Yeah, that's a cigarette, a reconstruction. And Luxor means the source of light. This is Luxor in America, in Las Vegas, a 30 story hotel and casino in Las Vegas Strip. 120,000 square foot. I found that very interesting. You see that they have emitted a light source on the top of the pyramid. And yeah, you see here the famous or infamous obelisk because that is more or less a copy of Luxor. But it gets worse. Because when you see that on the backside of the dollar bill, you see that unfinished pyramid here for the Luciferian doctrine or for Atlantis or whatever you would like to call that. Um, it's very interesting because I just said, uh, keep it simple, stupid, me being the stupid here, Brad, um, because I then find it very interesting if I really think or try to think simple, then why is it on the back of the one? dollar note because that means one huh? it's one world religion it is not on the backside of the 100 dollar note usually i would think that uh, the more precious the note the more attractive or more important the symbol but here you got it on the one dollar bill so that means one Empire, one government, one world religion, one system, one world new or one new world order. It's like the World Trade Center, who happened to be two, and now it's just one world trade center. This is just one world religion here. 
Because the pyramid is a symbol of religion, it's a symbol of hierarchy, it is a symbol of Egyptian trinity. Once again, one. It's, it's so simple, actually. Why it's not on the back of the $10 or $100? No, it is one. The hotel is named for the city of Laksa, the ancient Thebes in Egypt. Okay, very interesting architecture with the Diabolos Cantina. Yeah, so the Devil's Inn, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, quite, <laughs> because it's a pagan religion. How how else to worship than Satan? Now you see that they have even an obelisk inside. Yeah, of course it's just Egypt, always just for fun of it. No, these are rituals. Yeah, this is a worship of pagan gods, images, and idols. Yeah, and Luxor from the Arabian city is a big city here and in the i have to translate it now maybe maybe just maybe yeah we are lucky to find it in the english wikipedia uh, we would be very pleased to find it i'm not quite sure if we succeed yeah the world's greatest open air museum. Ah, museum means of the muses, of the Greek muses. At the ruins of the Egyptian temple, etc., etc., of the river Nile. Yes, yeah, sure, but, and, then, and now comes a big but, the etymology means the palace, yeah, Luxor, the palace, Egyptian, upper Egyptian, etc., meaning castle or palace, etc., etc. I don't know if they carry the thing that I want to uh, find here. But uh, maybe not. No, it is not here, which I found in the German Wikipedia. <laughs> Again, yeah. No, it is can't can't be found. So we have to switch back to the script and the German Wikipedia once again. <sighs> yeah, Luxor Arabic comes from Old Egyptian, means Epet reset. Ever heard of reset? <laughs> What a coincidence. I'm not making that up. This is, even, it is actually in the German Wikipedia, believe it or not. Yeah, it is in the German Wikipedia. I will show it to you. Yeah, you see here, Laksa Arabian, Arabish Arabian, Old Arabian, or Old Egyptian, sorry. Ipet Reset. <laughs> Ipet Reset. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Just want to, very interesting. In old Egypt, it was a temple area of the name Epet Reset. So the temple area means, the, bears the name, resembles the name Reset, the temple. One of the great obelisks uh, been uh, erased uh, in front of the temple, but maybe this is also from the English Wikipedia, I don't know. But you can't find the name of Reset there. <sighs> Uh, but it's a temple, huh? We can agree on that. It's a temple. It's a temple complex. Temples everywhere. Temple, temple, shrine, temple, Luxor, temple, Luxor, temple, 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 temple everywhere. So Luxor is a temple. So that means that also your Luxor in Las Vegas is also a, a, a copy of a temple, huh? Sure, it has symbols like the Sphinx, like uh, obelisks, etc. There are many other obelisks in Paris, for example. Not only the uh, Eiffel Tower, but also they have a place uh, de la Concorde, uh, the place of unity. This means the place uh, Concorde de France in uh, Paris. Yeah, what is that other than a temple area? Huh? That looks like a temple, smells like a temple, then it is a temple. No, it doesn't move like a temple, but it is, it's just a temple here because this is the worship of Osiris. Uh, actually, this is also disguised. Actually, it's the worship of Nimrod, who was also cut into pieces, according to legend, has it. But so that is just another name for the same thing in all the languages of the world. So that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they have processions there. And they have processions there, but uh, of course, mainstream media is uh, downplaying everything in, in L.A. Times, Los Angeles Times. They say Egyptians obelisks are no longer standing tall. 1990, they say, why obelisks? Nobody even knows what they are. Yeah? So the Los Angeles Times don't know anything. They don't know anything. We know what they are. 
Yeah? Because they admit that there is an archaeologist named Labi Kabachi, his greatest authority, who said they were sacred, but they don't know what that means, say they are sacred. They're just sacred. It's all you need to know. They are sacred. Don't touch it. Yeah? If you touch it, you have to buy it. No, it's just sacred. Yeah, but they don't know what they are. Yeah. Can you imagine that in the same article they tell you that nobody knows what they are and they tell you they are sacred? Yeah. So at least we can agree on that fact that they are religious items, huh? And now I found that in uh, not not long ago in uh, 2021 they carried 22 mummies in a ceremony procession through the main capital of Egypt in Cairo. Huh? Yeah, For that's right, Michael. I was shocked when I saw that video footage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the Queen Hatshepsut. They cannot. Tell. Yeah, that's very interesting because all the things happening out there are rituals. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not making it up. And then I came Laksa, Laksa. You see that Laksa was a temple area in Egypt. Laksa is the name of the pyramid in Las Vegas. And now I found another interesting article about Laksor. That's the Laksor massacre. The killing of 62 peoples, mostly tourists, on 17 of November 1997 uh, at an archaeological site and major tourist attraction around the Nile from Luxor. We know that Luxor was a temple area. Hmm? We know. So it is a religious um, thing going on. You see, this is more or less also here a temple area. It's called a temple and is a temple of Hatshepsut, location of the attack. Yeah? Uh, once again, all wars are religious wars and all the texts are religious attacks or they are rituals as the same is as uh, or goes is valid for john f kennedy and of course six gunmen allegedly killed 58 foreign nationals and four egyptians the assailants assailants were armed with automatic firearms and knives and disguised as members of the security forces they descended on the mortuary temple of Hatshepsut at around 8 45. they killed two armed guards at the site with the tourist trapped inside the temple that is that is the most interesting thing inside the temple the killing went on systematically for 45 minutes, during which many bodies, especially of women, were mutilated with machetes, and the dead included a five-year-old English child. And this is a religious killing inside the temple. This is a sacrifice here. And the German part is more explicit on that, and you don't want me to go into that, what they did with several body parts. You don't want me to talk about it in English. Once again, you don't have to know anything. You just have to believe your mainstream press. But if you read between the lines, then you know that this was a religious assault. This was a ritual here. It happened inside the temple. Come on. And it's the same for John F. Kennedy. It was a religious ceremony. So that is my point on all of that. If you compare that, so John F. Kennedy is not the by far the most important, but it is just one ritual beside many other rituals. May it be the massacre of Luxor, may it be the moon, uh, hoax, it's all rituals. Yeah? Rituals are also happening where nobody is slain. Yeah? But that, that's a problem. Um, if they are doing things in secret and then disguise it as an act of religious fanatics or so. But actually, yes, these are all religious things going on and especially um, going on behind uh, secret doors. So many things, people are disappearing or being killed and having strange accidents. And so these are all rituals or many rituals out there going. And I found a very interesting Bible verse. It is Isaiah 29. 15 bread yes woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the lord works are in the dark and they say who seeth us and who knoweth our turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay the works say of him that made it he made me not or shall the thing famed say of him that is famed he hath no understanding yeah excuse me works. framed framed not yeah. famed i said or shall yeah. the thing framed say that framed it he hath no understanding 
Yeah. Yeah, their works are in the dark. Yeah, these are secret societies. The works are in the dark, and they say, "Oh, nobody sees us, but the Lord sees everything." Hmm. Yeah, and you see that these are people who are, who are working in the dark. They are emitting light to the sky. This is a, just a reference to Lucifer, of course. Yeah, it's just uh, using a tourist site, tourist attraction to deceive the people. Of course, they are inside a pyramid. A pyramid is a temple. It is not a, a, a grove or a tomb. Don't let, of course, that's what the school is uh, telling you. No, it is a religious worship. And also it is, of course, a resemblance to the Freemasonic hierarchy. That as well, because uh, many parts of the Freemasonic hierarchy are direct uh, resemblance to Egyptian uh, trinity. Yeah, and that's also the problem here with uh, Pink Floyd, the dark side of the moon. Yeah, on the left side, you got the front cover here. This is the exoteric. You see that, oh, there's a light beam through the prisma and then coming a rainbow. And I once said, no, that must not necessarily be because uh, that is a pyramid here also. It's not a triangular shape or a prisma. It's also a pyramid. And who'd, and uh, if, it, if it is an Egyptian pyramid, then the light comes from the right side emitting to the left because they are writing from right to left writing from right to left. So then all the life is into this pyramid and then comes out with one light beam. So one world religion uh, or one doctrine. Yeah? And so this is on the outside and people say, oh yeah, that is a prisma. But when you have the poster of the vinyl edition of the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon, then you see, oh, there are three Egyptian pyramids then depicted here. So, <laughs> yeah, so this is just the exoteric for the lay people. And this is here the esoteric that they know that, oh, there has something to do with Egypt. Now. I don't know if somebody, some member of uh, Pink Floyd is actually a Freemason. Uh, I know there is uh, Nick Mason, but uh, that does not mean that he's a Freemason. I know that uh, the lead guitarist David Gilmore has received a CBE. <laughs> ah, so that uh, tells also a lot. Yeah. So yeah, all I use. Yeah. Yeah. All are using uh, their esoteric versus exoteric deception. Yeah, and also this is just uh, the headline of the time, Las Vegas, the new all-American city. It's nothing American in it. It is just Egyptian. Yeah, on the right side, you see officially in a German Wikipedia page, you see a triangular or a pyramid of the Freemasons in Germany in, in Wilhelmsbad. Yeah, this is a Freemason pyramid. So, <laughs> sorry, this is a pyramid once again, Freemasonry. That is the birth of the German flag, which is... Uh, totally uh, tossed around because uh, black is standing for the uh, for, for darkness and death of course and it used to be uh, on the on, on the ground here on the flag nowadays it is on the top yeah so everything has been mixed around here especially in germany mm -hmm. yeah but you see there's symbolism one eye symbolism and pyramid symbolism not only on the uh, one dollar bill but also on the uh, many occasions out there freemason by the way means originally a traveling guide of masons with a secret code yeah you see that doing things in the dark doing th things in secret isaiah 29 15 once again yeah freemason comes from brother mason from frere Marson. Others say it was just because the Masons worked on the freestanding stones, <laughs> freestanding stones, yeah, maybe obelisks, yeah? but I think uh, free is a subject of di uh, dispute. Yeah? Maison means just brother, so hmm? free Masonic. Yeah. Of course, they don't rely to Egypt uh, solely. They mainly rely on the Tower of Babel. They will always tell you they rely on the Temple of Solomon, but that is just another approach to deceive the people to think uh, that uh, people would then think they are religious, uh, they're Christian or what else. I don't know. Once again, we know that Dallas is on the 33 latitude. There are many things happening on the 33 latitude, but also there are many things happening on the 22nd of November. 22 plus 11 means 33. There are many interesting things happening at 33. There are many also interesting things happening on the 22nd of November, but that is for a later session. So 33 is the 
biggest or the highest grade in the Scottish Rite Freemasonry, then it is an honorary degree, which just only few selected member can ever achieve, not by doing anything, not by, by, by doing it on, on their own, but just by um, being given away that honorary degree for special services. For example, for being the elite second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, he then received a 33 degree. Mm -hmm. The man who is having no arguments, but uh, is hitting people in the face, you know, from the last uh, episode, from the last session. 33. So, okay. So, and now for something completely different. Now, this is one of my favorite actors or comedians, John Cleese from Monty Python, but it's just my taste. Now for something completely different. Of course, Microsoft has something to do with it. Now for something completely different or not different. It's about Laura and Hardy. What they got to do with it. Well, I found an article in a German uh, newspaper. They said that the Pope invited Stan Laura and Oliver Hardy to a secret audience. I said, what? In 1950, after they have done their final film, final movie, Pope Pius XII, so Eugenio Pacelli, yeah, they wanted to invite them and he did. And actually, according to this source here, they arrived at the Vatican. Uh -huh. And that means that this uh, Pope then had a special sense of humor. It was so more or less Hitler's Pope during the reign of the Third Reich. Yep, and the newspaper here claims that popes are only only humans. I don't think so because the Pope claims to be the replacement of Christ and being infallible when he's preaching uh, in the open or officially. Yeah. So, but you see from the symbolic here, yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Don't believe anything, but just look at pictures. I think that this Pope uh, during the Second World War, um, he saw himself as a resemblance or replacement for Christ. Huh? What do you think, Brad? Oh, yeah. Well, hey, just look at what the Protestant uh, reformers and them that uh, adhere to the Protestant doctrine in, in recent times uh, Perhaps a century ago would would believe about the Pope, the man of mm -hmm. sin, the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Rio de Janeiro. Now, Jesus Redemptor. It, of course, it is Catholic, of course. You see, it is a violation of the real second commandment not to mm -hmm. have any images and idols. But To make images and idols, thou shall not bow down nor serve them. Yeah, but this was this was also erected here. I think it was in the 1920s, so it was just uh, before the Second World War. Let me let me just look. But just came, comes into my mind. Jesus, Jesus Redemptor, or oh, Redemptor. Yes. Um, 1922. Yeah, it started to and oh, you see, it finished 1931. Yeah, it's just uh, oh. eight years before the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was quite recent, uh, hmm? 10 years ago, yeah, when the Pope made this, this gesture. Oh, that is, uh, was quite recent. Yeah, and also was the same Pope who signed the Concordat with Nazi Germany. And then I discovered that there were no actual records in the Vatican archives about that secret audience taking place of uh, Lauren Hardy at the Pope. But then they, um, yeah, they just uh, found something, yeah, because they don't have any picture or any note in the archives of the Vatican. And so uh, this historian called Mr. Gemma, he says it is most likely that all hints for the very unusual private audience, they have been erased. Oh, so maybe there are other facts who have been erased from the archives too, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the reason? So they are suspecting maybe the reason is because uh, they were having problems with alcohol and they were married several times. But of course, the most obvious reason is that Oliver Hardy was a Freemason and there was a papal bull do uh, uh, and uh, who was just condemning Freemasonry because just he was a Freemason. He was not only playing a Shriner in the Sons of the Desert, but he was a real Freemason in, the, in his uh, private life. He was a member of Solomon once again 
again, Solomon, yeah, being prominently named here, Lodge in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, this is, has officially been named in an episode of This Is Your Life, and I can uh, bear witness to that because I've seen that television uh, thing. And now it is in totally contradiction to the papal ban of Freemasonry happened in 1738. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Freemasonry has several um, strange orders. For example, the International Order of the Rainbow for Girls. So rainbow in the Bible means the um, community with from God to Noah. And in the LGBT, it has another meaning. And now I have uh, come across the fact that also the uh, Freemasonry Youth Service is using the rainbow. Huh? Everything will be fine. Please stay home for your safety. What a distraction everywhere. Oh, yeah. When they say peace and safety, <laughs> then sudden, sudden destruction. destruction will come upon them. Yes. And now for something completely different that you now know why the last one hour or so was necessary to point out the combination of Freemasonry and politics and the Vatican. Now for not something completely different, but something similar. This is Pope John Paul the first. Not the second, the first. John Paul the first born Albino Luciani, was head of the Catholic Church and sovereign of the Vatican City 33 days later. Now you know the reason why I wanted to name him in the session about the JFK ritual, Freemasonry, politics and the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Very interesting uh, event happened here. It's a smiling Pope. He had some very interesting publications. Uh, a collection of letters uh, to very prominent personalities from Jesus Christ to Pinocchio. I said, oh, <sighs> Pinocchio was a murder because he murdered his friend uh, Jiminy Cricket in the movie of Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Walt Disney happened to be a 33 degree Freemason, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, he got rid of so many small traditions and he was only reigning 33 days. Mm -hmm. And then it gets very strange. Because we have to translate this into English, because I don't want to look for any other um, English content now, which is then totally different once again. After a pontificate of only 33 days, John Paul I died on the night of September 28 and was buried in the crypt of St. Peter's Basilica. An autopsy of his body was refused by both his family and the Vatican. His death quickly gave rise to numerous conspiracy theories. The deceased was found in his bedroom bed at about five in the morning by the head of the papal household, Sister Vincenza. Oh, there's also always a sister around when you need one, huh? She then notified private secretaries Diego Lorenzi and John McGree. Evidence shows that at 5.37, Meiji informed Cardinal Secretary, etc., of the Pope's death. <laughs> so very interesting, huh? Very interesting, 33 days and an autopsy of his body was refused by both his family and the Vatican. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. An Austrian pathologist Hans Banker examined the published sources and evaluated them in his book, Many Ways to Eternity. According to him, no reliable conclusions could be drawn from the vague information. Yeah, sure, because they don't hand out any inform more important information. As probably explanations for the sudden death, he gives a blood clot carried from the leg, veins, blah, blah, blah. He, sorry, I have to really say blah, 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 because it's probably, most probably, maybe, and you see that don't, if you don't do an official examination of the body, you cannot conclude anything, yeah? Autopsy refused. Yeah, so everything else is speculation here. It's absolutely speculation. It's absolutely speculation. The Vatican's restrictive information policy has in, indeed given free rein to many speculations. Yes, so they have to hide something. 
But on the other hand, it has prevented the spiritual authority of the Catholic Church embodied by the papacy from being involved in a partisan way in these hypotheses. Yeah, so they don't have any uh, interest in the truth, it seems. huh? Yeah. A certain David Gallop has uh, then published the book In the Name of God, The Mysterious Death of the 33-Day Reigning Pope John Paul I. And he says it has a direct connection to the affair of the Banco Ambrosiano and their connection to Licio Gelli's Freemason Lodge called Propaganda Due P2. You know that propaganda means the spreading of faith. And what is then P2 other than a Freemason Lodge is spreading their doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michael Bakun in the book A Culture of Conspiracy is uh, writing this. He is referring to Lady Queensborough, who has another name actually, writing in 1933. In 1933, was considerably more pessimistic, concluding that, quote, Luciferian occultism controls Freemasonry, unquote. Mm -hmm. And isn't it uh, Freemasonry, which officially has been uh, founded in the United States of America, isn't it uh, Luciferian doctrine when there is a pyramid on the dollar bill with a light on top? Yeah, you see there also on the dollar bill, you see the reference between Freemasonry and, of course, Luciferian doctrine. Yeah. Mr. Brandon places the dividing point at Masons of the 33 degree above whom the diabolical activities allegedly take place. Quote, this is the work of the Scottish Rite, which infiltrated Masonic lodges for the purposes of using them as a framework for the establishment of their godless New World Order. Unquote. Hmm? Conspiracy theorist John Coleman, for instance, believes that a Jesuit Freemason ring exists inside the CIA and such views have been easily absorbed into accounts of a secret government that makes deals with alien invaders. Yeah, I know that many, many, many Freemason people believe into this. In the interlinked hypothesis of secret societies, a place can be found for every player and new components can easily be added. Masons can be connected to Jesuits and a combined group can be joined by extraterrestrials. Actually, this is a, a hypothesis which has uh, named to me and spoken to me in person a few months ago. <laughs> it was very interesting. Yeah, so many of them believe uh, the things of the gray aliens, what the NASA is depicting. Huh? Although the Jesuit Mason connection is the more prominent, yeah, yeah, you see that everywhere you see that there is a connection between J Jesuit and Mason, Masons, and uh, we have also discovered that on the book of uh, the Grand Design Exposed by John Daniels. Yeah, so there are numerous people who are coming up, and we know that the Masons actually have been controlled by the Jesuits. Why is that? Uh, because also the grand masters of uh, Freemasons for Albert Pike, uh, he was controlled by a Jesuit. Now that is known today. So that means that even the grand master isn't the grand master of all masters. Hmm? It's just the grand master of the masters of Freemasonry, but not overall and not absolute. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting because that is just a, 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 a professor of a university here. It's not just a, any bloke like me coming up with any conspiracy theory. Huh? This is just a professor here who has writing something about uh, the uh, Masonic conspiracies cannot easily be separated from other plots in contemporary literature. Mm -hmm. In the first place, they were already linked with others, notably with those about Jesuits in 19th century material, and that connection is still maintained. That is on page 136 on that very book. Yeah, and it's all over the place, of course, they... <sighs> yeah. It's all over the place. All over the place. No. Okay, that was the repetition. Yeah. And the problem is you have to look at the symbolism. I don't have to look to pictures and you don't have to look to text because everybody can play tricks on you. We don't know if that professor is a conspiracy uh, nut, if that professor is controlled opposition. We simply do not know. This is a picture here of uh, the Swiss air connected to the massacre in Luxa. You see that uh, if you exchange the uh, the plate or the, the image here on the plane and you write here Italy 2020, you see <laughs> you can make everything up. 
nowadays also with computer technology. Yeah? For example, here in Luxor Massacre, somebody uh, spilled out here water in front of the temple area and then you just uh, cover it with a, a, a red paint or with a computer program, I don't know, and it seems, it looks like blood. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just deception everywhere. They are playing tricks on you. Even in the book, The Looming Tower and Al-Qaeda and the Road to 9-11, Lawrence White uh, says that the, was the, Swiss, the Swiss police claimed that Osama bin Laden had financed the attack. But I could not find that in that book. It was, was very interesting. Yeah? So sometimes also the quotation is not correct. So keep it simple, stupid. Keep it, please, simple, stupid. Yeah. The problem is that many people do not like to to to, have to tell the truth because they cannot um, handle the truth. Actually, this is James Nicholson here from that uh, very famous movie. Uh, what is it? A question of honor? Oh, I forget the name of the movie, Michael. But it's in German. It's a question of honor. I don't know what it is. It oh, is. okay. Yeah. So, but that pope reigned also only for thirty-three and then days and one was then dead of a heart attack the official explanation of course hmm? yeah many oh, i think these, it's a few good men i think is the a few good men oh yeah thank you it could very well be yeah many of these uh, concerns about the conspiracy of the death of the short reigning pope john paul the first possibly linked that to the vatican bank and linked to freemasonry because the lodge of uh, p2 actually was a freemasonry lodge was mm -hmm. None of the claims have been substantiated then. Okay, then we will substantiate it on our own. Discrepancies in the Vatican's account of the events surrounding Pope John Paul's first death. It's inaccurate statements. Yeah. Inaccurate statements. So this death is possibly linked to Freemasonry. Discrepancies in the Vatican's account of the events surrounding Pope John Paul's first death is inaccurate statements. Yes, sure. Inaccurate statements. <sighs> I think lies is a more simple term, huh? Keep it simple, stupid, inaccurate. Yeah, yeah. So this is just no profound statement. Yeah. So there's a number of conspiracy theories, many associated with the Vatican Bank, which owned many shares in Banco Ambrosio Oniano. So what is the Banco Ambrosiano, huh? The bank came to be known as the priest bank. One chairman was Franco Ratti, nephew to Pope Pius XI. Oh, how convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His deputy then in 1965 was a certain Roberto Calvi. And I hope that this name will ring some bell. When the mafia boss Licio Gelli dies at the age of 97, he was a Masonic Grandmaster, implicated in some of the darkest chapters of Italy's post-war history and the worst scandal to rock the Vatican. He has died at the age of 97. He was a fascist sympathizer. He was the father of the leader of the notorious P2 Masonic Lodge, passed away. Very interesting, huh, Brad, that a mafia boss was the founder of a Freemasonry Lodge in Italy. Oh, yeah, very good point, Michael. Ah, but it gets worse. Now you see Mafia boss, Freemasonry, linked to the Vatican. Hmm. P2, a propaganda due, was an influential secret network that taunted politicians, judges, bankers, and senior military figures among its members. Its tentacles stretched throughout the upper echelons of the Italian establishment of politics, although an attempt to have its members jailed for political conspiracy and attempted attempting to destabilize the state finally fade in 1994. Mm -hmm. It is best known internationally for having been at the heart of a murder mystery involving both the Mafia and the Vatican with center and the death of God's banker Roberto Calvi, who was found hanging beneath London's Black Friar Bridge in 1982. This is the article of Forbes.com. When the appearance suicide of God's banker Roberto Calvi was ruled as a murder. Yeah. We will skip this because uh, I have made my own conclusions about that. 
It was rumored that financier Mr. Sendona has ordered those 97.7 banners publicly accusing Calvi's Banco Ambrosiano of irregularities in act of revenge after being denied funds to save his failing banks. But the Black Friars, now it gets really interesting. Sendona and Calvi had known each other since the late 1960s and were both members of the Masonic Lodge known as Propaganda Due. Remember Lucio Gelli, founder and mafia boss? Led by Licio Gallo, a self-declared fascist who aimed to fight communist forces at home and blah, blah, blah. A list of nearly 1,000 reported P2 members who reportedly called themselves Fratineri, meaning Black Friars. Um, what was the bridge where Robert de Carvey was being found hanging? Wasn't it the Black Friars bridge? As they wore black robes to their meetings, was found in one of Gallo's property during large, part of a larger investigation. Oh, it starts making sense, huh? It starts making sense after all, yes. And if you then now know that this bridge has been attributed to the Dominicans, Dominicans are the people who have founded the Dominican Republic. It is there where it is very hot, much more hotter than in Italy even. Yeah, it's been the uh, Dominican Republic in the Caribbean has been named according to the Saint Dominicus. Yeah, Dominicans are the order who have made the Inquisition before the Jesuits took over. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, they're the founders and, of the Inquisition. Yes. Yes, and Friar in, uh, in simple terms, keep it simple, stupid. Member of the of one of the mid-decent monastic. Yeah, so religious monks, orders of the church. Yeah, and even uh, Mr. Silvio Berlusconi, Premier Minister of Italy, he was a part of the Masonic Lodge. Yeah, so even a Prime Minister who, being a Freemason, can part be part of the Italian government or even be the Prime Minister. Interesting, huh? Everywhere you come across that. So propaganda doing was Italian Freemason Lodge. Founded by a mafia mob, a mafia boss, and it also incorporated the later Premier Minister of Italy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that the problem is that there are many, many, many secret agency working behind it. Uh, NATO secret armies, Operation Gladio and terrorism in Western Germany or Western Europe, sorry from Daniel de Ganza, Swiss historian, very interesting book about that topic. Yeah, so that many, many, many terrorist acts are being carried out by special organizations and uh, stay behind armies and not by private people on a certain private revenge attack or so. That is just the, the thing to distract the people into believing there was just another low nut like Lee Harvey Oswald in the case of John F. Kennedy. Huh? Yeah, so once again, Collegium Verbanum de Propaganda Fide. Yeah, propaganda comes from, of course, from the Latin language and it's been a spreading of faith, like the propaganda here, the spreading of faith, the spreading of false belief by propaganda professional Edward Bernays, a nephew of Sigmund Freud, who later was being invited into the Vatican by the Jesuits because he did such a tremendous work on writing his book Propaganda. And later on, when it has been a very bad smell to use propaganda because Edward Bernays also was being used by the German Minister of Propaganda, the Ministerial Ministry of Propaganda, Josef Goebbels, who was a Jesuit, uh, claiming to uh, be Jesuit, and he was Jesuitically uh, trained, and he wanted to become a priest. He did that in the Netherlands, by the way. Then this propaganda here was being renamed into public relations, so that every public relations agency out there actually is a propaganda spreading the faith and yeah, spreading the faith into false beliefs like into the belief of hill and norton uh, public relation company into the false claim of the alleged uh, iraqi soldiers uh, who have then uh, put the babies onto the naked floor killing babies in the war yeah hill and norton yes hill and norton yeah um Kuwait babies, yes. Yeah. Naria testimony. 
the false testimony which led to a war. Hill and Knowlton. Yeah? The, the entire campaign was been run by the American public relations firm Hill and Knowlton from the Kuwaiti government. Yes, that was uh, this lie had cost thousands of people its life. A, a 15 year old girl or so, the daughter of an ambassador was lying, claiming herself to be just a nurse, watching all the terrible stuff on. Uh, yes, when nothing had happened, then. Yeah, this is just uh, from Hill and Knowlton, American global public relations consulting companies. Yeah, or in broader terms, yeah, it is a global propaganda company spreading false accusations, false, uh, yeah, false uh, truth, false doctrines. Yeah, so people are being manipulated. Edward Bernays says, quote, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tasted formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized from 1928. Ha, it's almost 100 years old, but it's uh, very, very, very actual, very recent. Yeah, there are many, 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 many newspapers, but uh, this uh, photo claims only owned by three corporations. And I would say this is uh, Disinformation, I think it has been governed or only ruled and owned by one. And this sits in the Vatican. Mr. Calvi then disappeared when they were awaiting a new trial. He was running out of time in June 1982. Banco Ambrosiano was allowed to trade at the Milan Stock Exchange. But then it lost 20% of its volume. Italy's central bank put pressure on Carvi to account for the bank nine-figure debt. The date of his appeal, appeal hearing June 21 or 21st, sorry, loomed. Carvi needed help and decided to appeal directly to Pope John Paul II. In a typewritten letter signed by Carvi, dated June the 5th, the banker told the Pope he was his last hope to avoid the bank's crash and the damages to the Vatican would suffer as a consequence. Carvi asked the Pope for an audience to explain everything that has happened and is happening certainly without his knowledge. He offered the summary of his dealings he'd been involved with and seemed to throw Archbishop Marquinkos under the bus along the way, referring to the heavy burden of the mistakes made by the current and former representative of the IOR, including Sedona's wrongdoing, etc., 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 etc. Et but then he disappeared. Mm -hmm. He also acknowledged his role in financing political religious organizations in the East and the West and in coordinating and consulting consultation with Vatican authorities, financial entities in Latin America with the goal of fighting and containing philo Marxist ideologies. Um, let me please remember that uh, the Vatican was very highly involved in the uh, Polish uh, Solidarność movement, and that was also the thing of the headline of the Time magazine you see in that intro of the series of the uh, holy alliance between the Pope and Ronald Reagan. Calvi told the Pope that he had received offers of support on the condition he detailed the activities undertaken in the interests of the church. But Calvi added, I won't be blackmailed and I won't blackmail in return. I have always been loyal, even when it's most dangerous. Mm -hmm. The illegal transaction that ultimately brought down Banco Ambrosiano were the tip of the iceberg of illicit activities Calvi had been embroiled in. As investigators would later find, Calvi's Banco Ambrosio has set up a complex system of borrowing and lending through the bank's offshore subsidiarities. And benefiting from the fraudulent ventures were authoritarian regimes in Latin America, the anti-Soviet solidarity movement in Poland, yes, this is the secret alliance which been depicted in the Time magazine, and the mafia's heroin trade. Oh, hmm, something they have in common with another big organization. Mm -hmm. 
The specific role of the Vatican in Banco Ambrosiano's eventual crash remains shrouded in mystery. Marquinkos, who managed the Vatican funds, has always denied any wrongdoing, though he was indicted in 1987 by Italian authorities as an accessory to fraudulent bankruptcy in the bank's collapse following the discovery of a number of letters to patronage, apparently backing the offshore companies used to funnel Banco Ambrosiano's money. Marquinkos never faced trial. Oh, why is that, you might ask? Hmm? Because Italy's highest court ruled that the IOR as an ent entity belonging to the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, that's why it's called immunity. It has nothing to do with the actual situation, but real immunity means that nobody can harm you. That is real immunity, can only be granted by the Roman Catholic Church, by the way was outside the jurisdiction of Italian authorities under the terms of the 1929 Lateran Treaty. And that is the very, that is the very reason, Bam. Brad. <laughs> that is the very reason, Brad, why also the Pope Benedict cannot be sued for anything and is now being in the Vatican. Yeah. Wow. That's a load to take in, Michael. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah, of course, they claim that the Pope never received the letter and blah, la 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 la. But you see, the conclusion about that is uh, with no help forthcoming from the Vatican and with the protection of the P2 uh, lodge lost, Carvi was left to leverage another connection, Flavio Carboni, a well connected Sardinian entrepreneur. <coughs> yes, of course, he is an entrepreneur who had ties to criminal organizations in Rome. Now, why don't they tell you he is connected to the mob? <laughs> would be too obvious for the magazine, huh? You see all the things, of course, if you got so such a high ranking uh, bank uh, people, of course, you are connected to every uh, uh, every group. Sure. Yeah. Carvi was then smuggled from Trieste in Italy to Yugoslavia by motorboat, then from Yugoslavia to Austria by car. After meeting Carboni in a town in Austria near the Swiss border, Calvi and Vito headed to Innsbruck, Austria, where they boarded a private plane that would take him to London. London! Oh, the financial head of the entire world. Calvi had shaved off his trademark mustache, possibly in an attempt to better disguise himself. Throughout the trip, Calvi had reportedly carried a black briefcase full of possibly incriminating documents that later went missing. Oh, what could that be? Some of which have never been recovered. Carboni would later charge be charged with and then the quitting of selling the briefcase to a high-ranking IOR official. Yeah, London was not meant to be the final destination of the journey. Calvi apparently planned to travel across the Atlantic. His wife has already moved to Washington, D.C., and he told his daughter, who was in Switzerland, oh, <laughs> how surprising being in Switzerland, to do the same. In a phone conversation with his daughter the day before he died, he told her something really important is happening, and today and tomorrow all hell is going to break loose. He was right. Yeah. That day, June the 17th, the bank's board voted to remove the missing Calvi as president and dissolved itself, asking Italy Central Bank to nominate a commissioner to deal with its affairs. The bank's trading on the stock exchange had to be suspended after shares lost of 30% of their value. It would be found to have around $1.4 billion debt. On the same day, Calvi's long-term personal secretary, Graziella Corroce, fell to her death from a window of the bank's Milan headquarters an appearance suicide, though conspiracy theories naturally abound. Yes, it is a very strange act of suicide to fall down. Uh, uh, but okay. She has reportedly left a note saying, may Calvi be double cursed for the damage he has caused the bank and all its employers. The next day, Calvi's own body would be found about 700 miles away. Yeah, it's very strange when the FBI carries that kind of a letter. Speculation is that she committed suicide. Well, that is really speculation. And maybe it's, and that's also what the FBI wanted to press to tell the public. Huh? I don't know. Yeah, you see, because the head of the FBI at the time of JFK was Mr. Edgar J. Hoover, who was also a 33 degree Freemason. Ah, everywhere. These guys are everywhere, huh? Yeah, so Mr. M Mrs. Corroche fell uh, from a building and also another guy called David Rossi fell out of a building. Uh, these are all just been uh, 
happening. This is just uh, uh, if you if you really think about this. So this is the Blackfriars Bridge where Roberto Calvi had been found in London. Uh, interesting if you uh, compare the skyline from London to Dallas. Huh? Also lovers of pyramids once again. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you see there are many lovers of pyramidical buildings or pyramidical shapes. So this is uh, Jackie Chan, who am I, in uh, Rotterdam in uh, Netherlands. Ah, this is so oh, very interesting architecture here. This is a Black Fires Bridge once again. This is where Robert Tokalvi has been found. Yep. Of course, that's a usual uh, suicide when you hang yourself and then you have also some very heavy bricks in your suit, Brett. Huh? This is just a common uh, thing. That yeah, you, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just oh. coincidental, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the German part, and sorry for, for it's not me being lazy, but it's more in, in, uh, easy for me to translate it now into English. So the Blackfriars Bridge is a street bridge uh, across the River Thames in London. Yeah, she connects the city of London on the north side. Um, to Southwark in the district of London Borough of Southwark on the south side. She is directly beneath the trail station of uh, Blackfriars and has been named after a monastery of the Dominicans called in English Blackfriars. That is why that bridge of court is called Blackfriars Bridge. And now compare that please to the article of Forbes.com which I just read. A list of nearly 1000 reported P2 members who reportedly calls themselves Fratineri meaning Blackfriars meaning being Freemason. So there is no difference in the name they gave themselves from Freemasons to Dominicans. It is just another side of the coin. And that happened, that so-called suicide happened at the Blackfriars Bridge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that does not mean anything. Huh? And of course, it's a suicide. <laughs> My, my, my. So that bridge is in the possession of Rich House Estate, which is a charity organization of the Corporation of London, which is the older name of the City of London Corporation, which is, oh my, 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 oh my. I have to translate it into English. This is the local authority of the City of London. In London, yeah. So there is a city of London in London, yeah. It's the inner city, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So this is the largest tax haven in the world. It is not in the Caribbean or any unknown country. The corporation has formally existed since 1191. Oh, that was the time where the Templars were still in existence, huh? Mm. <clears throat> it first documented exemptions is the city of London. Formerly, the municipality has existed since 1191. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the corporation is governed by the Lord Mayor of London, the Court of Alder Aldermen, and the Court of Common Council. It has no control over the Middle Temple and Inner Temple, two legally separate enclaves in the city. And it is just by coincidence that in the city of London Corporation there is an Inner Temple and a Middle Temple, huh? It has nothing to do whatsoever with religion. It has nothing to do whatsoever with rituals and the murder. Or sorry, sorry to, to, to misspell that the uh, so-called elite suicide of Roberto Calvi, so-called God's banker on the Blackfriars, which when he was a member of the Freemasonry Lodge P2, writing a direct letter to the Pope. P2 being erected by or founded by Mr. Gelly, which was the mafia boss. And the members themselves calling the Black Friars, and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Yeah? The name of inner temples are coming from the Temple Knights, of course. And they also got a temple church. And they got an inner temple hall. So you don't need any translator here. Yeah. So it has been, uh, yeah, it's been rumored. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just hilarious to see. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, this is the district of the square mile, so to speak, square mile of London, the city of London Corporation. What do you think who have founded that? <laughs> 
Yeah, of course it was the Templars. And the Templars were the first bankers. They were so rich that um, the I think it was the King Philip in France, and so weiter, he has, has made a connection to the Pope, and uh, the king was uh, actually ruling the Pope at that time, if I remember correctly, um, because there was a threat to all, because they were so big in power, because they had all the possessions. Of course, what does a king want to have? More power. So that is the tradition of the priests of the temple church. They're being called master. Oh, like the, the masters of Masonic uh, things. And priests are the reverend and the valiant. Yes. Yeah. So that is the so-called square mile in London. Yeah. It's called the square mile, although it is rectangular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that has something to do. Oh, um, also, Freemasonry is referring to the square. Hmm? Squares heavily found heavily in Masonic rituals and recognition sites. Oh, what a coincidence. Hmm. I got the same idea as Wikipedia does. Now, Masons are required to square their actions by the square of virtue and are sworn by God and the square. Yeah, God and the square mile. Hmm? And there is no coincidence that there is a St. Paul's Cathedral. And that St. Paul's Cathedral more or less is also in New York, but it has nothing to do with it. Hmm? Ah, and it has nothing to do with the cipher 33, huh? with the Pope reigning and has nothing to do with nothing because now the Eiffel Tower has grown in size. It's now 330 meters tall, yeah, 33. And of course it is Freemasonry, yeah. But you see that also by the height. They have now installed, I think it was a new antenna. Yeah. How, how easy to... Um, improve or grow the uh, size of a tower than by installing an antenna. Yeah. So now comes the last part because I'm really uh, exhausted about all the strange satanic artifacts yet all these strange surroundings that nothing to do with Freemasonry, P2, Lodge, the Pope, Vatican. Yes, they are all connected, of course. We are, we are talking about Italy at the moment. Huh? God's banker talking about Banco Ambrosiano making illegal transaction also for the Vatican, also for the Italian state, being a member of his Freemasonic Lodge, P2, which belonged and been founded by the Italian mobster Lucio Gallo. Gelli. <laughs> yeah. Some conspiracy theories connects the death of John Paul. Yes, we are still at the John Paul 33-day reign in September 1978 with the image of the bishop dressed in white said to have been seen by Lucia Santos and her cousin Jacinta and Francisco Morti during the visitation of Our Lady in Fatima in 1917. In a letter to a colleague, John Paul has said that he was deeply moved by having met Lucia and vote to perform the consecration of Russia in accordance with her vision. Yes, that is so recent, the consecration of Russia. It has been in this year, 2022, in March. Pope Francis, prayer, act, consecration, Russia, Ukraine, Mary. Because in that, uh, I won't say ritual, um, in that apparition of Mary, of Fatima, in 1917, it was the order that Russia should be Catholicized to believe also, of course, it is Mary's apparition, uh, in the Holy Mary and to get rid, so to speak, like in the murdering, the killing of the Tsar's family in 1970, the um, Russian Revolution then starting, because the Tsar, the head of the state in Russia, happened also to be the protector of the Russian Orthodox Church in Russia. And so they want to Catholicize Russia so that it is in agreement to the first apparition of the Our Lady Fatima. Yeah, and this is now Pope Francis praying to a false idol. First commandment, thou shalt now have, have no other gods before me. Second commandment, that you shall not uh, make any images. Yeah, and what is that other than this? Tell me. So the Pope's act of consecration of Russia and Ukraine to Our Lady has something to do with the Fatima 1917 apparition, which of course only um, appeared to three children. Very easy to manipulate little people. Yeah, this is the official text here. And this is the Pope with the broken cross. Where shall we start? This is the actual text here. Oh Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, yeah, 
You see, Mary is not the mother of God. Mary is the mother of Jesus. <laughs> Means Jesus in the flesh. Huh? He's not the mother of God. God is eternal, eternity. God is almighty. God, God does not need a mother. Hmm? And then Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Um, sorry, Jesus said when he comes back, he will not breathe. He will not. No. Jesus says when he's coming back, he will not bring peace, but a sword, if I remember correctly, Brett. Yes, that's right. Yep. So they are mixing everything around. They are mixing everything around. It's just a promotion for the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, by the way, you remember in this uh, session that uh, Ukraine resembles the uh, colors blue and yellow? Yeah. Oh, Mother, hear our prayer. Yeah. I don't see any God, Lord's prayer or something like this in that. But of course, we, we do not have to go into this. The Immaculate Heart of Mary. Uh, sorry, after Jesus has been born, he had several sisters and brothers, if I remember correctly. <laughs> ah, yeah, well, but it's just the the Queen of Heaven, huh? The Queen of all. Or uh, the compromise of all religions, maybe. Yes, the deceased John Paul the First Pope had met Lucia Santos, so the uh, one of the girls of the uh, Fatima apparition, while he was a patriarch of Venice and was deeply moved by the experience. In a letter to all to a colleague after his election, he wrote to perform the consecration of Russia, which Lucia said Mary has asked for. Yes, <laughs> that is part of uh, the uh, Fatima, uh, what let's say ritual. Yeah, so. The consecration that happened for Russia and Ukraine, Brett, is is ritual. It's nothing else. It's a religious ceremony played by the Pope. Yeah, Brother Francis of Mary's of the Angels. Yes, Pope John Paul I, the Pope of the Secret. What does Isaiah twenty nine verse fifteen says? Woe that woe to them who Seek Try deep, was it, or something? Seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. I yes. think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite sure. I'm quite sure. And that's a that's a problem, Brett. You see that uh, every time I, you go into this, the, the world events are happening. Be it JFK, be it 9/11, be it now Russia, Ukraine. You see, you always got a religious background, which is completely hidden for the public eye at least somebody would come up and uh, connect the dots but usually you won't find that in the mainstream they won't connect that that has something to do with the fatima and it is always the same with the uh, color uh, scheme of uh, corona you really see that jfk was just a ritual a freemason ritual we are going into this ritual in the next session I just want to point it out in this session that there is a connection between politics, Freemasonry, and the Vatican. Well, that was a very and, interesting example, too, that you just showed us, Michael, yes. Yeah, and also you, you see not only this, but you see that on, on the higher levels, you see the connection between the Jesuits and the Freemasonry. Well, you know the Jesuit motto, the end justifies the means. So if a war is necessary or is killing is necessary, it just it seems that they don't care. Of course, if you know the fourth vow. But it's just they are doing it in a sequence and they are mixing everything around to install the top of the pyramid in place. So they have the one world religion, the one world government, yeah, and so that is no coincidence in my keep it simple, stupid attitude that it is on the one dollar bill. Yeah, therefore, we can close it down to the famous last words of Brett because I'm really exhausted now from speaking so much. I need a drop for my voice, but it's always the same. It's always a ritual. It's always a ritual because in every war you see that people have will be sacrificed, they will be burned to death. 
there will be bombed, there will be killed, there will be slain. Yeah, it is just well. This is true, sacrifice. Mike. Um, yeah, well, rituals represent a big problem, according to my understanding, with uh, particularly having to do with the church and the faith. Uh, having been raised uh, practically Roman Catholic uh, in the Lutheran Church, practically speaking, because you know Martin Luther was part of the Catholic faith and he taught most of the Catholic doctrines. He had a few quarrels with the church. And of course, it's a long, long, complicated story and you have to research it and study it on your own to know it. But uh, if you ask me about ritualistic churches, uh, be it the Lutheran Church, uh, you know, of course, the Catholic Church is much, much more elaborate and and uh, in some ways uh, more direct. Actually, they tell you their doctrine. They're not a, they're not, you know, hiding things from you, whereas I believe the Lutherans uh, are hiding the facts from you because it's a Jesuit infiltrated church and they're using uh, these doctrines, Catholic doctrines, through the Council of Trent, or essentially uh, through Vatican II, to um, keep you in the ritualistic mindset so you don't go and, and refer to a, an old King James Bible because you really don't have any knowledge of the history. They fill you with false history and false doctrine. But of course, you never learn that unless you are really digging around in the history books. And then all of a sudden things don't add up. Such as the seventh day Sabbath. And it says in scripture that, you know, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. So. There are a lot of things that don't make any sense when you're in a ritualistic type of church because you're too busy with the ritual. You're too busy, you know, singing songs and learning what the, what shall we say, what the church wants to teach you. You don't learn anything uh, at all in terms of uh, the suppressed information about our real history as believers of course to be a believer you have to be born again uh and i know i wrestled with that in my youth because they taught us this kind of of faith michael that was so watered down and um very hmm what can we say lukewarm Mm -hmm. not uh not on fire at all and and uh yeah that's a problem that's a real problem and of course i think that's kind of the the whole dilemma with the church and why so many people don't attend churches anymore because they fail to recognize well i failed to recognize that a Lutheran church is simply a ritualistic type of church. Whereas, let's say, a Baptist church is not. They are, are what's considered uh, more of a, uh, a Bible-based church. The problem there is, um, again, you have all these people that have infiltrated the church without your knowledge in the public and they report back to their headquarters what's going on in your congregation. So then you have people entering into your congregation that start teaching different doctrines other than what's considered uh, a, what can we say, a, a trusted Protestant doctrine. So essentially, 
you know, what we learn in historicist teaching is we go back in history to the very root of the problem and we recognize it at that point and then we know for certain that that is what we have to deal with it's it's a very old problem and it's nothing new the problem being now is that's hidden from you in a ritualistic church you don't you don't learn any of that in a ritualistic church what you learn is ritual instead very dangerous in in my opinion uh michael and um well that's kind of how we have to uh go about this i guess is uh you have to uh take your research uh into your own um life and uh apply it to your own discoveries and that type of thing and yeah michael uh just really tough to um to present these items to the public because i think it's it's very rare very rare that someone actually sees the spiritual context of scripture And I don't know what else to say, Michael. Yeah, thank you, Brett. I hope that we will reach somebody out there that really see these connections and they wake up to the truth. At first, it may be someone scary. Maybe people will be afraid. But uh, nothing else will help you than the truth and jesus christ is the truth the way and the life nothing else will save you in the end when it comes to eternity eternal life so what is that life in comparison to the eternal life it's it's not much michael yeah not much no no not it much. really is over uh what can we say um overrated yeah like a lot of things in this life overrated yeah and then we'll they will take that to our disadvantage we'll say that oh yeah if we can, if we can rid, get rid of real christians so well, that won't uh, do them any harm <laughs> yeah they will have their own commandments they have their own commandments their commandments is the end justifies the means and it is just it you see that here on that very picture that is not not the worship of jesus christ I'm Jesus sorry, Michael, Christ says, I'm the way the life. Our connection is a little bit bad here. I'm I'm getting you you broke yeah. up during the past couple sentences, and I hope our recording comes through. Yeah. Could on you just repeat those couple my, sentences? On my on my end also. On my end also. No, I just wanted to say that he is not worshiping Jesus Christ. He is worshiping yeah. Mary. Yeah, that's yeah, right. In the Bible does, in the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way. Yeah. And not to only that, he's to, worshiping to the Father. It an image and an idol and bowing down and serving it isn't he yeah so brett the connection is getting worse let's let's quit it it was a long session i hope that uh, we have reached some people out there that they really see what is the truth yeah we hope that it could help you and we hope to see you soon in the next upcoming session when we go into the second part of the jfk ritual and it comes actually down to dallas on the 22nd of november 1963 another ritual sacrifice of john f kennedy happened thank you very much for having me and maranatha maranatha